Hi, Mike Ernest here with CFO One, and welcome to our Job Keeper Strategy and Implementation video. If you're like a lot of business owners, you fully understand the difference between reading about a program and thinking about kind of its opportunity compared to actually having that program implemented correctly into your organization. There's a lot more work that goes into the latter than the former. So this video is all about trying to shrink that level of effort as much as possible for you. And you should be able to walk away with three core things from the video. One is a thought process for really how to define and figure out whether this program is for you. Two, if it is, then how do you extract as much value from it? If you're going through all the time and energy and effort, how do you get as much value from your energies as possible? And then three, all things looking good, how do you get this thing implemented as cleanly and clearly as, a, as possible? So without further ado, and those being our goals for the, the, this video, let's start with the basics of this JobKeeper program. It is a $130 billion package to deal with the economic impact of the coronavirus, the largest financial lifeline package in Australia's history. It is temporary, of course, but lasts from April through September 2020. The goal is to help businesses keep people in jobs and restart when the crisis is over as efficiently as possible and to maintain the employer-employee relationship. And what we see as the real opportunities of this program are to obtain $1,500 per fortnight for potentially productive employee work over the next six months, to do important and strategic non-busy work that you rarely had time to focus on during the normal work dynamics, and to identify the A and B employees from the pack. Those are the best mindsets to help your company long-term. It is simply easier to see people's level of business acumen and ability to be productive in these more disruptive times. But with opportunities come challenges too. Even with this video's help on teasing out the important concepts and action items, it requires high quality time, knowledge, and effort to figure out how to best utilize this program for your business. Financial documentation is required to be created and submitted to qualify the further program, and some cash flow is required to implement the program also. Moving from concept to reality in these challenging times requires commitment. You can't get around that. And it all begins with knowing the right questions to ask and asking them in the right order. The first one needs to be, who is the team to figure this program and implementation out? You will need your best business strategy person, a person who knows and manages the employees, and a financial person who can create the necessary reporting and submission activities. So on the surface, this program is all about moving money from the government's pockets through your organization to employees' pockets. And in, the, in this process of doing so, maintaining a relationship between the employer, you, and the employees so that you can pick up you know, business where you left off when things were more busy. It's kind of the obvious thing. The strategic thing though is here's an opportunity for you to work on projects that you just didn't have time to do because things were too busy and you didn't have the resources available to do so. This requires identifying the right projects, bringing in the right people, and then ensuring that you use the right financial reporting and disciplines to ensure that those financial requests and the payments and the ongoing documentation are done in a way that don't create issues for you downstream. The next question you want to answer is, will you qualify? Obviously, there is no reason to go any further if you can't demonstrate that your business has not been impacted by 30% of its revenues. Most businesses will be. The real question is whether it is easy to demonstrate this or whether there will need to be some financial storytelling to make this clear to the commissioner. There seems to be a real willingness to listen to the business logic on why a company should qualify rather than a simple formula and a hard fast rule. So either you qualify easily or a mini project should be identified to create the necessary documentation to substantiate your story. This entails more financial analysis and forecasting documentation and potentially consideration requests to the commissioner. Next, you'll need to clarify which employees qualify. The main qualifications are that they were employed as of March 2020. They are over 16 or over, and they are either full-time, permanent part-time, or casual, but employed for over 12 months. And they need to be an Australian resident or holding a subclass 444 visa. And now we get to the big step, which is the one that we oftentimes want to skip because we're trying to be efficient. But now is the time 
to get really smart about the results that we want from this program. At this point, we've probably clarified that yes, we're gonna qualify and who can be part of our, our pool of resources to work with. But now it's time to get super, super disciplined on creating ways to extract as much value from this opportunity as possible. Here are a couple examples of things you can be thinking about. It is certainly not an exhaustive list, but it's going to hopefully kind of prime the pump and get you thinking a little bit. It's a great uh, area that if you have any questions, please pick up the phone and give us a call. We'll, we can talk through this because again, it's a very rare opportunity where things settle down enough that we can actually work on some of those really important strategic projects that can really be game changers for our entire organization over a period of time. Maybe your goal is to create a stronger connection with your key employees. So think about what this really needs to look like in terms of conversations and activities and overall processes. And here's the big one that we touched on earlier, complete strategic projects. These are the kinds of things that you never felt you had time for, but you knew had a lot of strategic value. Things like create a better marketing funnel for your company. That means creating new content, maybe setting up a new workflow. Uh, you have to make sure that you test it. You know, all the things that really go into creating a marketing educational program where your potential customers can actually gain something from their journey and better understanding what it is that you do and in the area that you work. Another smart area to typically improve are in your sales processes. Oftentimes there are opportunities to improve in your reporting, the training and key types of disciplines and skill sets, and maybe it's in your CRM cleanup in terms of how you're using it to track and be aware of what the actual value is in your pipeline, and there's a host of opportunities in that space. Another one is strategic partnership identification and or development. Many more people are accessible currently because, again, <laughs> they're not as busy unless they're super smart and they're keeping themselves really busy with strategic projects. Another one could be in the process improvements of your overall business. You know, convert manual to digital activities. Really take a good hard look at what are some of the efficiencies that you could gain by doing your, your job or service more efficiently. And then lastly, reevaluating your product and service offering and looking at how that can be improved, how it can be streamlined. A lot of these things all take thought, innovation, and some iterations. So those are a few, and I'm sure you've got some others that you've been thinking about. You know, another way of diagnosing it is, what are some of the things that you just know that you should be doing to your company, but you've just never been able to get over uh, that hump of doing more urgent, more you know, critical things in the short term, and so you've never gotten those projects. Think about that and identify those as potential projects that you could be working on right now. So now that you become more clear on the value you're going to extract from this JobKeeper program, you're as ready as you can be on trying to figure out the next step, which is how to pay for the actual program. The question you need to ask yourself is, is there sufficient working capital to pay for the one month fronting of the government payments? If yes, then confirm one more time that the capital outlay justifies the value that you've identified that you're gonna extract uh, through this program. If no, it's not going to be easy, then further financial planning is required and it's time to pull in the financial people and get creative. There's almost always a way to pull this off if you found enough value that you can extract from this program. So after you make it through these first five steps, which were again to identify your JobKeeper team, determine whether you qualify, ID the employees that will participate, clarify the most valuable results you can, and ensure you can pay for the program, then it's time to generate a practical execution plan to complete the process. Here are more tactical steps required to implement. Number one, enroll the company on the ATO business portal. Provide bank account details for payment directly to your bank account and estimated number of employees who will be eligible for the first payment, which will have taken place from the 30th of March to April 12th, and then uh, second payment from 13 April to 26 April. Then number two is to finalize the eligibility for the business owner participation in the program. You need to get this right. Be sure you ask your accountant or us if you don't find them as helpful or sufficiently informed about you and your business or the details of this program. 
if you're a client of ours, we're already doing this for you, so don't worry about it. Number three is to identify the first JobKeeper payment dates to employees and start making payments. It must be in line with the JobKeeper fortnightly payment schedules. For example, it cannot commence the week of the 6th of April or the 20th of April. Then number four, notify eligible employees that you are intending to claim the JobKeeper payments on their behalf. Employee nomination form and standard letters to be sent out and administered, followed up by the business. And if we're working with you, notify us by April 24th uh, if employees have not signed and returned because they will not be eligible for JobKeeper payments until this has been done. A copy should be retained for your records for five years. Number five, apply for JobKeeper payment from Monday the 4th of May through the ATO business portal. You then must notify your eligible employees within seven days that you nominated them. Number six, confirm and agree how timesheets roster JobKeeper payments will be processed for each pay run, ensuring all entitlements accrue, payslips issued, actual hours worked, recorded on payslips, and, and weekly reports as opposed to a total wage pay under JobKeeper. For example, the rosters plus top-ups to 750 and a separate pay run for all other JobKeeper payments at standard $750. Be sure to add a new pay item and GL code. Number seven, superannuation guarantee applies to ordinary earnings, not top-ups of JobKeeper payments. Number eight, determine payroll tax requirements. As of April 20th, it is still unknown from April to this, uh, September whether it will be exempt or not. Ensure that employees are paid either the JobKeeper payment or the usual pay for any hours that the employee works, whichever payment is higher. For example, you cannot change an employee's duties and pay them a lesser amount. And one critical step to ensure gets accomplished is reflecting the JobKeeper program in your financial reporting. Without this key step, you will be flying blind on many of the key company financial performance details you'll need to navigate your company during these difficult times. So be sure this gets done correctly or this financial opportunity that you can receive with the JobKeeper program can turn into a liability nightmare. So what do you do after this video? Quickly assess where you are in this process of turning the JobKeeper program to actual revenue for your company. If you realized through this video that you may have skipped a step, be sure to go back and complete that before going further into the minutia. Save time by asking for help, ask your advisors or ask us if you don't have ones that you really trust. And now is the time for action, making decisions and getting your company positioned to bounce back quickly. Lastly, remember that there are other programs out there that can help. For example, the ATO Cash Boost for PAYG, the Crit Loan Settlement, the Land Tax Relief, Gaming Tax Refunds, payroll tax refund, work cover reductions, insurance premium reductions, and the list could go on depending on your specific business type. So I hope you feel a little bit inspired from the information that we've shared with you today, both in terms of maybe poking on some strategic opportunities, as well as the clarity that can come from some real granular information. But make sure that you reach out and get your questions answered by any advisors that you have or calling us uh, because it's a much more efficient process than trying to figure these things out all on your own. Oftentimes, there are many more options that sit in front of you uh, when you have the benefit of a couple extra set of eyes and experience levels um, you know, looking at the same challenge with you. So that being said, we hope to talk to you sometime soon, and best of luck on your journey.